One of the major features of patch 9.2 is the introduction of double legendaries. This has naturally introduced a ton of new builds and covenant options for most specs. So we've consulted with some of the best players for every class and spec and got their opinion on which covenant and legendary they're going to be making. And while you're out there grinding your legendary, don't forget that the best place to level up your gameplay is skillcap.com slash wow. We offer a full money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. So don't get held back from those gear upgrades this season. Check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Before we start working our way through the specs, it's important we clear something up. For March 22nd, when Chapter 7 of the campaign unlocks, players will be rewarded with the Belt of Unity. This is a legendary belt capped at 265 eye level with predetermined stats and will provide you with the effects of your chosen Covenant's legendary, changing as you change your Covenant. If you've reached revered reputation with the Enlightened, you'll be able to purchase the Memory of Unity. This allows you to craft your Covenant-specific legendary on any slot with your chosen stats and can also be upgraded to 291 eye level. Due to its ability to be craft on any slot, we will not be covering which slot to craft the Covenant Legendary Unity, and you should instead factor in two things. You'll inevitably be using four-piece tier, so don't craft this on an overlapping slot or a slot with good stats for your spec. Then you'll also want to account for your standard Legendary, which can only be crafted on limited slots. Anyway, enough talk, let's get started. Starting off, we've got Warriors. Arms is one of the specs which benefits the most out of the acquisition of double legendaries. You'll want to now always be playing Kyrian with the Elysian Might legendary. This was the go-to legendary before we could equip two, so it benefits Arms greatly. To pair up with this, we recommend Enduring Blow. This legendary will become the meta thanks to the Warrior tier set bonus, giving you additional chances to proc Colossus Smash. We suggest crafting Enduring Blow on Helmet with versatility and critical strike missives. If you prefer Fury, however, you'll again want to be Kyrian for the power of the Elysian Might Legendary, paired up with the class legendary Signet of Tormented Kings for the additional burst damage. As for which slot, Tormented Kings should be craft on a ring with versatility and haste missives. Next up, we got Hunter. Starting off with Survival, you're of course going to want to be Venthyr. This enables you to equip the ever so powerful Pouch of Razor Fragments. To pair up with this, the standard legendary will still be Craven Stratagem for its insane utility. Ideally craft onto a neck piece with both haste and versatility missives. Alternatively, Latent Poison can prove a valuable damage option when you don't need the additional survivability from Craven. This can be craft on gloves with, again, haste and versatility missives. If you prefer to play Marksmanship, you'll again still want to play Venthyr just for the pouch of Razor Fragments. And also, still want Craven Stratagem craft on a neck piece. This time, though, we suggest versatility and mastery missives for the additional damage, but if you play multiple Hunter specs, haste is still perfectly fine. For an alternative damage legendary, though, the best option is going to be Surging Shots craft onto a neck piece with versatility and mastery missives. Then, last but not least, for Beast Mastery players, again, not much changes, you'll want Venthyr for Pouch, and then Craven craft onto Necklace with haste and versatility. Up next, we've got Mages, starting off with the most popular of the three specs, Fire. We suggest sticking with Night Fae. Although the Covenant Legendary Heart of the Fae isn't the strongest, overall Night Fae still provides the biggest benefit. To pair up with that, the standard Legendary is still going to be the disciplinary command for that huge boost to your burst damage, ideally craft onto a ring with haste and versatility missives. For Frost Mage, however, we suggest going Necrolord. This allows you to equip the Death's Fathom Legendary, giving you additional chances to proc the Deathborn Necrolord Racial. To pair up with this again, you'll want Disciplinary Command onto a ring with haste and versatility just for the additional burst damage. It's quite the variation for all mage specs. As for Arcane, we suggest rolling Venthyr for the Sinful Delight Legendary. Due to the large influx of clear cast procs, this will greatly reduce the cooldown of your Mirrors of Torment, making it very useful. Then, for Standard Legendary, it's still all about Arcane Bombardment. This time, though, you'll want it craft onto a Cloak with Haste and Versatility Missives. Our next class is Rogues, and let's start with the most popular of the three specs, Subtlety. Sub, much like Warrior, benefits greatly from the addition of double legendaries as they already made good use of the Kyrian legendary, resounding clarity, and will continue to do so. This then enables Sub to equip the Invigorating Shadow Dust legendary to reduce the cooldown of all of your abilities and more importantly offset the cooldown of your blind to enemy healers trinkets. As for which slot we suggest, Neck with versatility and mastery missives. 
In regards to Outlaw, it's a little different as instead you'll want to be Venthyr. This gives you access to the Obedience Legendary, which has great synergy with the Go to Talent Dread Blades, providing you with a huge boost of versatility while also reducing the cooldown of Flagellation. You'll then want to pair this up with the standard Greenskin Wickers for that huge pistol shot damage. Grab this on Waste with Versatility and Haste Missives. Then lastly for rogues, we've got Assassination, of whom we predict to have quite the glow up in patch 9.2. For Assass, you'll want to be Night Fae in order to gain Sepsis and the accompanying Toxic Onslaught Legendary. This then can be combined with the Duskwalker's patch Legendary to reduce the cooldown of your Vendetta massively, allowing you to greatly benefit from your 4 piece. You'll want to craft this on a ring with versatility and haste missives. Moving on, our next class is going to be Priest, more specifically Shadow. Shadow has two options for Covenant Choice. First is Night Fae, providing you with one Somdi's Pact, a great new alternative to Necro Lord after the Pallid Command nerf for whenever you're playing with a melee for the huge damage reduction and CDR. Alternatively, if you're playing with casters, going Venthyr for mind games is a much better option, although the Covenant Legendary Shadow Word manipulation isn't great. Mind games is just too good to pass up. Regardless of Covenant, we recommend crafting Talbadar's Stratagem for your Legendary. This fairly new adaptation is strong due to its great synergy with Shadow Priest's new 2 set bonus. You'll want to craft this on Belt with Haste and Versatility Missives. Swapping over to Discipline, the best Covenant still remains to be Night Fae. Even after the nerf, this provides much needed mana and the benefits of the additional damage reduction in CDR thanks to Bwonsamdi's Pact. To pair up with this, the safest bet is always going to be Cephuse's Proclamation for the reduced CC duration and additional stat proc. Due to tier placement, this is now ideally made onto a neck piece with versatility and haste misses. That leaves us with Holy Priest, of which has two main covenant options. If you're interested in 2v2, we suggest going Kyrian for the Sphere's Harmony Legendary, combined with the Milikano's Soulbind, can reduce the cooldown of your Boon of the Ascended massively. For 3v3, Mind Games is still going to be a lot more consistent, so for most compositions like RMP for instance, you'll want Venthyr with the Shadow Word Manipulation Legendary. Regardless of Covenant, there are two main Legendary options. The one we suggest crafting first is Sanshi, Return of the Archbishop. Better known as the Res Lego, crafted onto back with haste and versatility missives. Alternatively, for when you don't think you'll be the target, Harmonious Apparatus provides the biggest boost to your overall healing. For this legendary, you'll want it craft onto a ring with again the same missives. The next class we're going to be taking a look at is Warlock. For Affliction, you're still going to be wanting to go Night Fae. This provides you with the Decaying Soul Satchel, great for providing you with a huge boost to haste and critical strike during your burst. This should then be paired up with the Drain Life Legendary Claws of Endereth, crafted on feet with haste and versatility missives. If Demonology is more your thing, they're set to be looking very strong for 9.2 due to double legendary options. You'll be able to go Necrolord and pick up the Shard of Annihilation Legendary to greatly enhance your Demon Bolts, which is then further enhanced by the Bale Spider's Burning Core, which we recommend crafting onto Wrist with haste and versatility missives. And last up for destruction, you'll again want to be Necrolord for the Shard of Annihilation Legendary, just for that added incinerate burst. Ideally, you'll then want to craft Cinders of the Azjakir onto a cloak with haste and versatility misses. Next up is Paladin. Starting off with Holy Paladin, we've seen a big change in Covenant choice due to the tier set bonuses. This now makes Necrolord combined with the Duty Bound Gavel Legendary a must have due to its immense synergy. You should then pair this up with the Shadow Breaker Dawn of the Sun Legendary. Going this route will also drastically adjust your stat priority, resulting in versatility and mastery being the chosen missives, with belt being the suggested armor piece. Bear in mind though, this is only the case once you get your 4 piece and until then will be considerably weaker. Rhett also is jumping onto the Necrolord bandwagon as it enables them to, much like Holy, equip the Duty Bound Gavel Legendary for that huge double finisher. You'll then be able to combine this with the standard Final Verdict Legendary, so you'll get the best of both worlds. As for which slot, Final Verdict should be craft onto Cloak to avoid any overlaps with tier pieces, combined with haste and versatility misses. Alright, our next class is Druid. Starting off with Feral, the standard and most optimal covenant will remain to be Necrolord, although the Unbridled Swarm Legendary isn't great, 
Adaptive Swarm is too good to pass up. You'll then want to continue to use the Drought of Deep Focus to provide you with that huge single target pressure. Now, however, you'll want to swap Legendary Slot to Ring with Versatility and Mastery Missives. Alternatively, you could run Night Fae for the Celestial Spirits Legendary, combined with the Eye of Fearful Symmetry onto a neck piece with the same missives for some additional burst damage. As for Balanced Druid, you're going to want to remain Kyrian despite the nerfs to the Kindred Affinity Legendary. This is due to buffs to the self-link portion, giving you a huge influx of mastery. This will still be powerful due to your ability to now pick up the Timeworn Dream Binder Legendary as well, increasing the damage and reducing the cost of your Star Surge. This combined with the Balanced Druid tier set will allow you to pump out a very large amount of Star Surges over a short period of time. You'll want to craft your time-worn dream binder on a ring with haste and versatility missives. Then lastly for Druid, we've got Restoration, and despite all the new additions, nothing really changed. Necrolord purely for Adaptive Swarm is still the best option by far, but now you'll also be able to combine this with the Unbridled Swarm Legendary for some additional AoE healing. You'll want to then combine this with the standard Verdant Infusion Legendary even despite the nerf. Ideally, recraft onto a back slot with haste and versatility missives. Our next class is going to be Shaman, starting off with Enhancement, who seem to be a lot stronger going into patch 9.2. For Covenant, you'll want to remain Venthyr for the ever so powerful Chain Harvest. Now though, you'll be able to use the Elemental Conduit Legendary to reduce the cooldown further. For Standard Legendary, you'll still of course want Doom Winds. This is just way too powerful to ever play without. You will however want to remake Doom Winds to instead be on Belt instead of Helmet, paired up with Haste and Versatility Missives once again. Then for Elemental Shaman's Covenant choice remains the same, with Necrolord being the best option. While the legendary Splinted Elements isn't the greatest, it still provides a nice chunk of haste which can have high uptime if you get lucky with Conduit procs. This then accompanies the new go-to legendary of Skybreaker's Fiery Demise. This now, when combined with the Shaman tier set, is going to provide you with some very high overall damage. In regards to which slot, you'll want Skybreaker's on a ring with haste and versatility misses which leaves just Restoration Shaman, of which again, we'll want to remain Necrolord for Primordial Wave, the legendary splintered elements, while not great, still provides some nice free additional haste. For standard legendary, you have two main options. Offensively, nothing comes close to Deep Tremor Stone, which you should craft on belt with versatility and mastery missives. You won't always want to run this though, and if you need some added throughput, Earth and Harmony provides exactly that. You will, however, want to recraft this to instead now be on a cloak with the same missives. Next up, we've got Monk. For Mist Weavers, you'll still want to remain Necrolord for Bone Dust Brew. Additionally, you will also be able to utilize the Bountiful Brew Legendary, giving you a chance to proc Bone Dust on your allies, which is just some nice free additional mastery healing. And for Standard Legendary, Memory of Clouded Focus will remain to be the standard. Craft onto Wrist with versatility and mastery missives. Moving on to Windwalker now. Due to the RNG nature of the Necrolord Covenant Legendary Bountiful Brew, most top Windwalker believe Kyrian to now be the go-to. This then enables you to use the Call to Arms Legendary to gain Xuen whenever you pop weapons of the order. This combined with the Invoker's Delight Legendary will provide you with a large amount of haste on a very short cooldown. Great for enabling Windwalker to do some huge consistent pressure playing into their new tier set. If you opt to go this route, you'll want Invoker's Delight Craft onto Cloak with versatility and mastery. Demon Hunter is our next class and nothing much is changing. Necrolord still remains to be the best covenant. Now though, you'll also gain Demonic Oath. This just gives you some additional AoE burst as well as reducing some damage you take. For standard legendary, again, it's all the same as Burning Wound remains to be the best option for its synergy with the growing Inferno Conduit. However, if you currently have this craft onto chest, you'll want to remake it onto a cloak to allow for tier pieces. Versatility and haste still remain to be the best missives. Alright then guys, that leaves us with one final class, Death Knight. Starting with Frost, you'll still want to remain Necrolord, especially since it's been heavily buffed. This then allows you to pick up the Abomination's Frenzy Legendary, increasing the damage and the duration of your Abomination limb. Absolute Zero remains to be the best standard Legendary for the reduced cooldown and stun effects to your Frostworm's Fury. You won't have to recraft this however, as Bracers with Versatility and Mastery Missive still continues to be the best. 
Unholy is set to make a comeback in 9.2, and this is partly down to the buffs to Abomination Limb, keeping Necrolord as the go-to covenant, especially now with the Abomination's Frenzied Legendary on top of that. To pair up with it, you will also want to be crafting Frenzied Monstrosity for the added damage for both you and your pet when transforming your ghoul. As for which slot you don't want to overlap with tier, we suggest Cloak. However, optimally, you'll want this on legs for the additional stats, paired with versatility and haste missives. Alright guys, that officially wraps up all the Covenant and Legendary choices for every spec going to patch 9.2. And if you want to make the most of your class and roll this season, head over to skillcap.com slash wow. For prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to hundreds of class guides and arena commentaries designed to directly improve your rating in arena. If you don't see the gains you were expecting, no problem. We're so confident in your results that we offer a full money back guarantee if you don't go up in rating while actively using our website. As always though, thanks for watching and good luck in season 3. Three.